Hey everyone, I'm Tree Carr. I am uh, here live. I'm going to have an amazing discussion with a fellow astrologer, uh, Shoba. So I'm going to add her now. So let's just do this. So we uh, wanted to have a very open discussion and a live discussion about all things divination astrology and also tarot so various ways in which we can have um receive messages and here we are shoba hi how you doing tree i'm good how are you doing yeah great happy winter solstice and happy, happy winter solstice. Uh, great conjunction as well <laughs> did you manage to catch it uh it was really cloudy here in the uk I heard. so uh, but we did a solstice ceremony last night so it was really quite powerful and we we did a ritual honoring the Great Conjunction as well. So that felt, we felt the energy, the energy was there. But hopefully tonight it'll be a little bit more clear that we can, you can see it a, a bit in the sky because I know that the effects are still there, I think up to two days afterwards. It might not be completely like, yeah, I know, but you'll be able to see it. Were you able to see it over there in Singapore? No. So I'm in quarantine in Singapore because I just came from the UK, right? So. We are stuck in a hotel room. Um, I can just bear about see a, the sky, but it's not the southwest because I think the great conjunction happens in the southwest section of the sky. So I think I face east, I think. So I didn't catch that part of the sky at all. Oh, well, you know, we're there in spirit, feeling it. <laughs> exactly, right? But the winter, the, you know, I love the winter solstice because in feng shui, that's when the energy changeover happens. That's when one year dies off and the next year gets born. So it's like, a, you know, in my mind, I see a relay race. It's like, you know, the rat hands over to the ox basically for this year. And um, that's when, you know, the new year is born. It starts gathering energy and moving forward um, to the next year, basically. Yeah, so I see it as a really positive thing, I, even though it, it's the longest night. I see yeah. it as the turning to the sun again. And uh, ritualistically engaging in that energy, it's like shutting off all of the, the, the darkness that you had been working through since the autumnal equinox. And now it's a turning back to the light. And so that was pretty amazing it, it happening also on the Great Conjunction, which is those two heavy, heavyweight planets moving yeah. into... <laughs> moving into Aquarius and uh, moving into a whole new archetype. So looking forward to feeling these shifts globally as well as personally. I know. And, and that's, I guess that's what we're going to be doing, right? On 7th of um, January. Um, very excited for that event, actually, um, for our session on 7th of January, where we're going to be, I guess, how do we put it? Um, we're going to try and decode. You know, both of us come from different schools of um, astrology and predictions. And I think we're going to use both our different tools and, and, and try and decode the energy for 2021, which, you know, it's a year that everyone is wondering what's going to happen after the year we've had in 2020. Everyone is like, please tell me what's going to happen in 2021. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to our session because, um, you know, I've done... My, my way is Batsu, which is Chinese astrology, the hexagram, the I Ching. And I'm so excited to see if there's some, you know, what, you, what your part is sort of saying as well, whether there's any sort of um, synchronicity, you know, anything, you know, going on. I'm just, I'm just so curious about that. Yeah, absolutely. So anyone who's just tuning in right now, uh, we're talking about uh, an event that we are going to be having with She's Lost Control on the 7th of January, and it's gonna be in the daytime uh, here in the UK, so 12.30 in the afternoon. And together, Shoba and I are going to uh, feel into the predictions for 2020, 2021. So it's like an or we're gonna be like, we're like, let's let's do an oracle. Let's, let's see what there is. And so we're gonna be using our various tools of divination in order to feel into the energies. So, I'll be uh, using tarot and precognitive dreaming and intuition. And Shoba is, um, has a, a history in, in hexagrams and Chinese astrology. 
And why don't you explain a little bit to those tuning in what Chinese astrology is and what hexagrams are and what you do uh, with your art? Sure. Um, it's, it's a strange thing because um, at first I, I wanted to study feng shui. Um, I grew up in Singapore and in Singapore, anything you do, people always will, let's consult the feng shui master. If you know, is this is the office you should choose, if this is the house you should buy. So I went into that. Um, I went into to study feng shui, but then I decided, or oh, I really was pulled towards, I realized predicting, predictions. And uh, for feng shui, which is basically a study of energy through elements, an environment, you try and see what the dominant element is. Um, and then you try and study it through that way. And it's the same principle for astrology as well of a person, you know, uh, based on a person's date of birth, time of birth, um, and where the person is born. You try and study the interaction of elements, and then you make predictions based on that. And, and then from that, you realize as well that each year has its own horoscope because we, we take winter solstice, the time of the winter solstice as the birth date of the new year and we draw out an astrology chart. So we almost treat the year as a person. So, you know, it's like, what is this person's horoscope? What does it say? Like what is going to happen for the person for the year? So that's the Chinese horoscope part. And then there's the I Ching, the hexagram and each year because it's like, 2021 is going to be the year of the metal ox. Funnily enough, each animal also has its own personality. So we bring that in as well. Like, what is an ox? What is a rat? You know, so that comes into play as well. And then we study the hexagram. And predicting is about seeing the patterns that are happening in all three sections, the horoscope, the hexagram, the animals, and then seeing, is there anything repeating? And that's when, you know, when it's strong, that's when the energy is almost sending a signal. And that's when you start sort of interpreting, sort of going, right, this energy is coming through really strongly. This is what's going to happen. So that's how sort of predictions happen on the Chinese sort of front. This is a very sort of um, Chinese system of doing predictions. Um, it's very elemental based, um, you know, like is next year, is it a tree that is, you know, in the middle of an ocean that has nowhere to put roots? Or is it earth, which is just very fiery and doesn't know how to cool itself down? So, you know, this is, it's based on these readings that we make predictions, basically, which I guess is really different from what you do, right? Yeah, it is different. I mean, for one thing, uh, the Chinese system, it, it predates the Western astrology, like it goes back very, very deep into history. So I find that fascinating. I also find the hexagrams fascinating too, just visually, because they, they, so, they look so high tech in a way. They look very modern. They almost look like a computer printouts. So I find them visually actually quite fascinating in, in that respect. Um, but yeah, I guess the, the, um, the techniques that I use for divination are Yes, slightly different. So my, my take on astrology is from the Western perspective and the esoteric yeah. perspective that has come out of, you know, probably ancient Babylon and, and um, Egypt and, and moved into Europe. And, and that's the evolution and the foundations. Um, so as we were talking about uh, earlier, uh, you know, the, the planets, uh, the Great Conjunction, and, and, you know, that's all from a, a Western perspective of astrology. But I, I mostly use uh, my predictions and divination through tarot. So mm -hmm. using the tarot cards as the tools, the external tools, um, alongside uh, intuition. So attuning in, so to speak. And so that's, um, that, that's come about very um, intuitively and naturally. And just something that I've, I've done since I was a teenager, really. And... Um, and I also get um, divination hits through dreams as well, through precognitive dreaming. And that has been since I was a young person, a teenager. So effectively, it all started with dreams first, because I would have dreams of events and situations. And then they would occur in waking time, sometimes like the very next day, very quickly. And that's what kind of got my attention. I was like, that's a bit strange. And so I started to... Um, become very much into the esoteric arts as a teenager. Uh, I think my first precognitive dream, what, it, was, it was so visceral and real. I was in 
sleeping and having a dream at night. And in my dream, I heard a car screeching, like the screeching sounds of the brakes. And it, uh, the, like the sound hitting something in the front yard, I thought that, that hit the house. Like that's just so loud, like a car crash, proper car crash. And I um, jumped up out of bed and looked out the window and saw a car had hit the tree in um and then all of a sudden i was in a dream so i was like wait a minute i thought that it was like kind of almost like an astral experience i was yeah. like wait a minute did was i just dreaming that or did i just wake up no i guess that was a dream it felt like a dream within a dream you know these sort of kind of uh, false awakenings that can kind of make us question the nature of reality so anyway i had that experience and then i woke up and it was a Sunday and uh, we were all downstairs at breakfast as a family. I was about 16 and we were sitting there having breakfast and all of a sudden we hear this huge noise of a car crash and the house shook and we were oh like, what? And I was like, I can't believe this. <laughs> Literally couldn't believe it. We ran outside and there was a car that had crashed into the tree of our front house. We had a big old oak tree. And the driver was obviously completely like unconscious at the wheel. We called the ambulance and made sure, you know, they came and the, the guy was okay. He, he didn't perish in the crash. But what had happened is he was driving and had a seizure, had an epileptic fit. No. And lost control of the car, uh, head on collision with the tree, knocked himself out. Uh, so after that experience, you know, I said to my, my mom and my dad, I, was, I said, I had this, this, I knew this in a dream last night. And my parents were pretty cool and quite open to it. They didn't, they didn't say, oh, that's, you're imagining things or, oh, it's just a dream. They said, oh, yeah. actually, we've, we've had similar things happen to us as well. So I thought, oh, that's really interesting. Um, my dad um, has precognitive dreams. We had a house fire when, when I was a kid and he had, uh, actually a precognitive vision before the fire happened the night before, um, which was really interesting. So I think it might, you know, obviously be hereditary in some kind of way, but that's how it all started. And then I started using, uh, learn Taro um, and learn the astrology system as a teenager, very interested in it. And, and I just kind of never looked back. So I use all these various <laughs> tools in order to, to feel into what's, uh, coming ahead for clients and, and whatnot. Um, so Shoba, tell me, have you had any um, predictions that stood out for you that have come to pass through your art of um, the hexagrams, the I Ching and Chinese astrology? It's, it, yeah, I mean, I just have to say yes, because um, I've been doing this since 2012. When I say been doing this since 2012, I learned the formulas in 2012, basically. And, um, you know, when you learn the formulas, you, you have to spend a couple of years sort of getting used to it and just perfecting the, it's, it's, it's quite scientific, actually, when you, you know, you're literally sitting down for, for days just working with formulas. And then it takes a while to sink in and get a feel of stuff. But um, so last year, um, you know, for the prediction for the, for the year of the metal rat, um, and it's on my blog and I, maybe I'll put a link to, on it um, to my profile later. But I did say that there was going to be a contagion. And, you know, when I was writing that in, I guess, so it would have been 2019 in December. Mm -hmm. In my head, I thought Zika virus, you know, it's just it, it, it just was strong. The con You know, the contagion um, element was really strong. Um, there was thunder. And then there was wind and wind is very dangerous actually because the energy of the wind is sometimes very gentle and it's very you know sometimes in a in a way you see it as communication you need wind to communicate you need to someone to pass the message forward but when it's combined with a very fast moving energy like thunder which was what was in the hexagram last year it becomes dangerous because thunder means something really fast really quick and the wind then takes it and makes it uncontrollable. Like, you know, humans can't control this energy. It's like, it just spreads, things just spread. So that I saw in the hexagram, there was in the horoscope, there was a similar fast energy as well. 
and we do something else called the flying stars. And again, that appeared. So I was like, oh, something's going to spread really, really far and wide. You know, I was thinking the wildfires, you know, maybe the wildfires is going to be an issue. And there was. And, um, and I was like, I think it might be something to do with an illness as well. I didn't expect the scale, honestly, to, to be honest. I did not expect the scale. You just don't think this will happen in this day and age. But, you know, the contagion was definitely it. And um, I think the other one was Donald Trump's, um, um, not Donald Trump's, but the US elections um, this year. Because um, when I did, I did the predictions using Donald Trump and Joe Biden's chart. And it was so weird. It was so weird because usually the result is so clear. Like one is the winner and one is not the winner. But when I drew, so I think the results were out, if I'm not mistaken, I might be getting my dates wrong, but it was like um, elections were on the 9th of November and the next day was the 10th of November. So on the 9th of November, Donald Trump's chart was so strong. He was the winner. And what it should be would be that for the next couple of weeks, his chart should remain strong. But what changed was that just the next day itself, um, Biden's chart, Donald Trump's chart just disappeared and Biden's chart suddenly rose up. So I was like, well, you know, what's happening here? Like, you know, so it was the whole idea of like, it's a split, it's a split sort of um, um, election. It looks like Biden might not appear to be the winner at first, but when maybe the postal votes come in, because I was thinking, what would take time for the results to come in? Like, you know, because Biden seemed to be gaining more and more strength as the days went by. So that was um, quite interesting as well. Um, that's on um, my blog as well. So yeah, these are the two things, I guess, that I really like to talk about. I'm quite proud of sort of sharing as well. Um, yeah, you, you had something about the contagion as well, didn't you? Yeah, I did, Shoba. Uh, very similar to you. Um, well, I, I, it came to me through a dream. So on February 19th, 2019, I had a dream that uh, felt very unique and special. And I'm also a conscious dreamer. I'm a dream guide. So I have um, I've written books on dreaming and how to connect to your dreams, become a lucid dreamer. And so I knew that this was a very special style of dream and it did feel precognitive. So I, because I've been working with dreams so long, I, I know the energy and the feeling of a dream where I'm being shown something that is uh, a divination style dream or something that will happen. So in the dream, I was traveling on a train and it was very funny. It was a very specific location. I was in the south of France <laughs> traveling on a train. Nice. <laughs> and it was beautiful. I was really enjoying the scenery looking out the window, that, that warm kind of golden light, like that solstice style light of summer solstice and just beautiful landscape and just really enjoying it. I knew I was on my way to a school and that I needed to get out um, at a certain stop to get out to go to school, that I was enrolled in a school. So uh, my train stopped at this village and I got out and I could see that the, the school I needed to go to was up on like a, a hill, hillside area. So I got to the school and it was like an old brick school, big, huge one. And I went into the hallways to try to find uh, where I had to go and enroll. There was a lot of people running about. There was like people, a lot of very students excited and getting to their classes. And I was sort of going, oh shit, where do I go? Where's my class? And uh, the, the hallways stilled out and the, the students went away. And I could see that there was a light at the end of the hallway um, that there was a light coming out of one of the rooms. So I was like, oh, that's the room I need to go to. That's my class. So I walked down and it was on my right hand side. And I walked into this room where the light was coming out. And it was a huge room um, that was set up kind of like university style where there was a lot of rows of, of, of seats to, to watch uh, you know, the, the presentation or the teacher. Yeah. But there was no blackboard or whiteboard or any kind of white, whiteboard. And there were no students in there. It was just me. Instead of a blackboard, there was like a big um, like hologram. It was just like really high tech, wow. a really big hologram. <laughs> and I just went down. Instead of sitting down in one of the chairs or the seats, I, I just went up to the hologram and I was just looking at it because it was alive with color and it was flickering so many different images and i was like this is fascinating so i stood in front of it and i looked and there was 
I was shown all these images coming up of um, like, like slides of, of uh, like cells, like cells dividing, like kind of biology oh. slides, like viral stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. But alongside of that, also, if you can imagine from a video editing point of view, that's all popping up, like just, you know, cells dividing and moving and that kind of look of virus or contagion. And then all of these mathematical codes were appearing behind it. So I was seeing all of these numbers and codes appearing behind these slides of uh, biological viruses and cells dividing. And as I was looking at this, I just got this knowing. It's hard to explain sometimes when you have a divination dream. It's not like you hear a voice that says something to you. Uh, you just get this knowing. Like it just, it's just, it, it just appears within you that this is a contagion, this is a virus, and it's going to kill a lot of people. It, it, not, I didn't hear a voice say that. I didn't see yeah. it written out on the hologram. It was just like this download of knowing, like, yeah, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at something that's going to kill a lot of, of people. And, um, and then I woke up, and that was, that was the dream. I wrote it down. In fact, I emailed it to a person because uh, there was a whole segment way before I went to, to the school part of the dream that involved somebody I knew. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll send them an email and send them this trippy dream. And I sent that email to them. So when uh, exactly a year later, uh, February 19th, 2020, um, I flew uh, to the day, flew to uh, Phoenix, Arizona to go to a family reunion. And as we were over there in Arizona, everything started to unfold with the virus. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it just clicked. And I just remembered, I was like, hang on a minute. I had a dream exactly about a year ago that outlined something similar. So I, I found the dream um, in my phone uh, because... I could just quickly search on the email that I sent to a friend and I, I read it and I went, this is, this is, wow. I saw this in dream, in a dream, um, exactly a year ago to the day. Um, and so I feel it was really linked in because I've had precog dreams before that have exactly the same thing where a hologram shows up. It's like, I know that I'm being shown something or schooled something. It's either that or I'm lifted up above the planet. And I can see um, like uh, aerial view of areas on the planet and shown things. So I've had that as well. Um, so that predictive one came through. Um, that was through dreams. I had the, um, the devastation in Australia come through in a, in a dream as well. Uh, okay. Six months before it, it happened. And I was actually in Australia hanging out with some guy who I didn't know. And I was never had a dream of, of Australia before. I don't, I've never been there. Um, and I was You've never been to Australia and you had never been there. And no. I was in this dream sitting in this fellow's backyard under a tree and looking around uh, and everything was dead and burnt and it looked like an apocalypse. And I looked out uh, into the horizon and went, what is going on here? And then I was like, then I was sitting under this tree and I got alarmed. I was like, oh, I better not sit under this tree as well because I heard those fire ants in Australia. They might burn me and, or they might bite me. And so I got up and this guy who was standing with me, he said, I wouldn't worry about it. He's like, you can keep sitting there. Everything's, all the animals have been killed. All the insects, they've all been killed. And he, he was just going on about how much devastation there is to the animal kingdom and and, and, and I woke up again feeling very like, that feels like something. So I actually filmed myself recounting that dream. I put it up on my dream feed. Uh, okay. So I have a record in public of that being there. Um, so yeah, dreams are powerful. They, I, you know, they come through, the precog hits come through that. But then and they come control. Through, comes, you call yourself a dream guy too. You, like for me, dreams are completely uncontrollable, right? It's like, Firstly, I don't remember half the dreams I dream. Um, you know, you just get up with the feeling like, oh, you know, I had a, but you, you can't recall details. And I never think I can control dreams. Dreams are things which happen to me, you know? 
Um, yeah. But whenever you talk about your dreaming, there's almost an element of, of you know, that's, that's something that you can sort of um, guide or, or, or move through with some, you know, consciousness almost. Yeah, it's what being a conscious dreamer is all about. It's uh, becoming aware and conscious within those states in order to get something done. Uh, it can be, you know, divination looking into the future. It can be healing or exploration or expanding your consciousness. But it's very much a similar realm I go into when I'm with clients, when I read tarot. So when I read tarot for clients, I, I pull myself into that zone of dreams, or maybe you could call it the zone of intu intuition. Um, and I, I retrieve information uh, through various, um, of various senses. So a lot of times I'll get vision. Uh, my, I, when I do readings, a lot of my times my eyes can be closed. So I, because I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing things. So I'll, I'll bring that through, but then I'll also get clear audience where I'll, I'll hear very, hear very specific names or sentences or information coming through, not with my physical ear. It's like a inner hearing, but you, you just know when it happens, it always comes on the left hand side. I know. And then the card will, like, then I'll pull a card and the card will completely align with what I had just seen. So it's like this interesting feedback loop. Um, yeah. But I, I have that uh, a lot with clients. So I'll have divination things that, that occur with clients where I will get bits of information, future information for them and give that, give that information to them. I think I even have a client on on the chat right now who I've, I've had names come through uh for them and said just write that down because something important might be popping up with that person or connected to that person at a later date um yeah. so that's how i how i work with divination with clients um yeah. it, and it's in 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 tandem with the tarot so the tarot is there to to almost like put the thumbs up after i get the information and then the cards pulled yeah <laughs> it's really interesting you say that um because um I do a lot of Batsu, which is Chinese astrology for clients as well. And, you know, it's formulas, you know, we've been taught formulas, like what is the date of birth, what's the time of birth. And when I first started doing it, it was just very dry. But after time and time again, it's like, like what you say, like something pops in your head, you start seeing things. On the paper, you've written all the formulas out. And then, you know, but I find the more and more I practice, like now when I look at the formulas, when I look at the chart I've written out, it's images that pop into your head, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, and that's then it's, you know, the formula confirms it. But I think it's a matter of practice, right? It's like, you know, maybe when you first started pulling your tarot cards and stuff like that. Um, but I think it's just the constant practice of just doing and doing. It just becomes like a shorthand almost. Like your body knows what this is about. Like, you know, whereas previously you had to go in through like um, tons of analysis and stuff. It's almost a shorthand now. I look at something and I'm like, the image just pops in my head and I'm like, right, this is the problem with this chart. You know, this is what's off balance. Like I can see the picture already. And then, you know, when I usually speak to the clients, you know, it's like, yes, they're like, yes, yes. You know, it's, it's, and then, you know, right. Um, but it's, it's almost like a confirmation. Uh, I think when you first start out with these things, you just go, am I doing this right? You know, you know, and stuff, but it's the practice when you put the work in, and, you know, it just, then it just becomes like a shorthand almost that, you know, two things confirming each other all the time. And that's, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I tell my tarot students that all the time because the, the part of the foundations of tarot work is, is memorization, learning the cards, learning the layers, the symbology, all the cryptic symbols. That's one thing to sort of get done. And, yeah. you know, the cards at the back of your hand, like the back of your hands, um, you, you know, um, they're really getting it into you when you start dreaming of them. But then after that layer, there's the intuitive nature to work on. So um, then that starts to all unfold. And like what you were just describing so articulately and so beautifully is that you end up pulling into those other senses. So you, you start seeing the visions or you start hearing the information or knowing the information. Um, and then the tools of the tarot or the hexagrams just give you a thumbs up about what is, was already coming through. So that's when you know you've deepened your practice. And that's when you know that you've done a breakthrough. 
Um, and there's ways in which you can practice both alongside, you know, practicing the skills of uh, reading the I Ching or the, the, the hexagrams or reading the tarot and learning and understanding them. But at the same time as learning the, you know, the pragmatic, cognitive, memorative skills of those tools, you can also develop your intuition at the same time, which is a lot more nuanced and quite subtle. And it's using the totally different brain side of the brain. So a lot of yeah. learning these skills, you know, you have to be quite, you know, strategic, logical. Um, there's a lot of uh, memory skill involved. And there's a lot of uh, problem solving involved and thinking. Yes, and, and, watching and, you know, um, um, I think a lot of people, they think divination and stuff is intuitive and you know um if only they knew the amount of work we had to do you know um just for batu astrology even feng shui i mean we spent years learning under a teacher now you know um and my school is the imperial school of feng shui and it's um um done by grandmaster um um chan and you know he was very strict he was like this is a chinese art you need to learn to write in chinese characters because he's like the character for fire, just writing it, will teach you about the personality of fire. The character of water, when you write it in, in the Chinese characters, it will teach you just by writing it what the character of water is, you know? So he was adamant and, and we had to learn, you know, the characters. We, we don't write in English. All my charts are in, you know, in, in the Chinese characters and stuff like that. Because he says that gives you information. You can yes. see what is hidden on the characters. You can get a sense of personality, you know. Um, just recently did a chart and it was fire you know, for a client and uh, it was a very fiery chart. And, and fire written in the Chinese character is almost like, um, it, it's just, you know, the energy of fire is basically, you can't stop it. It spreads, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's extroversion. It's, it's someone who's the life of the party. It's, it's someone who cannot sit still for a moment, you know, because they're always moving about because that's what fire is. And, just writing that it's it's almost like it's a burst of something you know that's how the chinese character of fire is it's so it's really really interesting and you have to do the that amount of work before you really appreciate all these various nuances that each sort of thing sort of can bring in absolutely it's important and everything holds a power like those symbols and those um the glyphs and the characters and i teach that too when i teach astrology that you know um getting to know the glyphs, getting to know the symbols. They're very, very powerful. Um, they're not just for getting tattoos. <laughs> you know, they are, they are a language and they hold a power and they hold a code. There's codes behind everything, codes behind everything. Even just in my dream with the virus, there was code behind it. You know, everything holds a mathematical structure. Um, so understanding and learning that is important alongside the opening up the intuitive skills and 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 it's like the right brain and left brain working together it's like into intuition and logic and strategy working together it's like a really good combination i think what it is is some people feel a little bit like oh my god the tarot is so hard to learn it's so like there's so much to it. it's daunting it is there's 78 cards especially yeah. the Rider weight deck, every single card is completely unique to itself with a different scene. There's numerology in there. There's like Egyptology. There's like astrology and alchemy. There's lots to learn um, and it can be daunting, but it's well worth it, you know, um, if you just stick with it and, and get through all the meticulous layers, um, build that good foundation, practice and then alongside um, work with your intuition. A lot of people think the first time you get a tarot deck, it might mean, oh, all of a sudden I'm magical. Like I can, I can channel all this information through the cards or connect with them, but it's a process. There's an initiatory process with doing this. Um, I say to all my tarot students, you need to, each and every single card when you get your deck, you need to claim it. You need to sit with each card and say hello and introduce yourself. Get to just really get to know the energy of each card. And I get some tarot students saying, it's so weird. There's certain cards that trigger me, you know, like I, whenever I see like the 10 of swords, I get very triggered. I say, well, then that might be your biggest teacher in the deck. So sit with that, feel into that. There could be something there for you to heal from or learn. And, and so I try to, you know, bring in a lot of the logical strategic and, 
you know, you know, just the learning aspect of the cards, but then also developing this energetic relationship and intuitive relationship alongside uh, the teachings as well. But I really do think it's a combination of both uh, learning divination and, and, and being uh, involved in this sort of practice isn't like away with the fairies woo woo type shit. I know some no. people think it's woo. It, it's not. It's it's not. it's not. It's not at all. <laughs> I'm far from woo. I don't like. I'm not into rainbows and unicorns and stuff like that. I embrace Me darkness too. as much as the light. You know, it's the two together that you work through. <laughs> yeah, Me too. And I'm from a science background. And you know, I told myself if I learn the formulas and I practice it on a couple of people, and it's I get it wrong then I know that this is wrong. You know what I mean? I, I always approached it from that point of view. And I guess what I can say is from all the stuff I've done, I see, I see that, you know, these, I mean, these were ancient stuff and feng shui and astro uh, and batsu. I mean, when you think about how these first came about, um, the Chinese farmers needed to develop a system to help them with the year's sort of harvest. That's how they, you know, it's, it's, it's basically common sense, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I do people's chart, I realize that they have inherently tried to balance their chart. So, for example, if it's a very fiery person and the person needs wet earth to sort of calm them down, I realize that they tend to wear a lot of beige or they tend to like ceramics or pottery a lot. You know, I find people naturally have this natural intelligence. They just mm -hmm. don't know how to articulate it. And I think... That's what learning these systems of energy reading does help you do. It helps you articulate it to people. Like this is what, you know, it, it gives you the words. They just do it intuitively. Whereas, you know, when you learn the system, it gives you the words to, to tell this is what's happening. This is what you're doing. This is why your tendencies are here. And this is what you need to do. Um, you know, it, 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 it sort of gives you the vocab basically. Absolutely. And I also think that the external tools uh, provide uh, comfort for those who are, you know, uh, or confirmations yeah. or uh, for those who might feel skeptical. So, um, you know, it's one thing to be able to, to say, you know, sitting with a client, yeah, I've just got this you know, vision of this scenario happening. And then the client pulls a card <laughs> and it aligns directly with such scenario. It can, it can actually um, help with any skepticism, M amount of times I have clients that just can't believe the synchronicity sometimes. Like, I love it though, it's so joyful for me because it makes them just go, it's blowing my mind, you know, especially when the <laughs> repeat cards get pulled. I mean, out of 78 cards, it's a numbers game. There's yeah. no doubles, so it can be quite um, fascinating and mind blowing for people. And then after a while, like, um, you know, it just becomes, you just start to trust it. At first, it just feels like, how can it be? And then you just trust is like, okay, I'll listen to that, listen to that message again, and uh, we'll take it on board. So do you, yeah. get, um, do you sometimes get um, clients like frustrated? So for example, um, you know, I think sometimes when people are stuck in something, and you know, I get it, sometimes when you're going through a bad time, uncertainty, you almost want a solution or answer. But sometimes the chart just reflects the current energy pattern you're in. And, um, you know, so now when I do sort of Batsu readings and stuff like that, it's more about understanding where they're at, the energy pattern they're at at the moment. And I always tell people, you can't change energy. You only can transform it. That's the only thing you can do. But you can't just hope it just goes from A to B without going through the process. You know, yeah, you absolutely. have to sit in it. You have to understand what's happening. You've got to make friends with the current energy. Absolutely. That's so well and, said. Yeah. And, and, and only then, you know, does things then change. It doesn't just go from A to B without, you know, a process. That's, that's it. There's always yeah. an evolutionary process. Definitely. Just like the last, this last year, 2020. We have a really interesting question here. Is there any guidance you have for us collectively for the new year ahead? So yes, of course, on January 7th, we're holding an event called 2021, A Call to the Oracle. So Shoba and I are going to be holding space for an hour, uh, bringing through um, our predictions for 2021 <laughs> through our various tools and techniques. So Shoba um, works with the I Ching, um, uh, the hexagram and Chinese astrology. 
and I'm going to be bringing my predictions in through uh, the tarot, um, intuition, and precognitive dreaming. So if you'd like to join in on our event on January 7th, it's in the afternoon at 12.30 p.m. UK time, you can click the link in my bio. It will take you to where you can register up. It's, at, it's with She's Lost Control. So I know some of you know that platform and that I've uh, done various events there before. So just click the link and, and, and hook up. It'd be great to share space with you and give our predictions. So we were just talking about some of the predictions that we've um, had over the past year that have come to pass. Uh, Shoba predicting the contagion uh, through her um, art of the hexagrams. I predicted the contagion through a precognitive dream that I had in February 2019. Shoba also predicted the, uh, the election too. The well, US election. The yeah. US election. <laughs> and oh, and Shoba, I forgot to tell about that too. So the night of the election when all the, it was all happening and kicking off and went, I've not done this before about politics. I'm gonna pull cards for both Biden and Trump. Whoa. And so I did that, I pulled, I pulled cards, um, uh, you know, one for Trump, one for Biden, one for Trump, and just went back and forth. And you know what? I couldn't believe, I've never pulled so many reverse cards in my life. What is a reverse card? For all of them were like reverse. I posted it, I, I actually put it up on, on, um, on this uh, feed in my stories, uh, all the cards, but the predictions came true, just like on, on, Biden's, uh, on Biden's cards, there was like delays after delays after delays. There was also money concerns, um, a real struggle for power. Trump, it was like, oh my God, it was like, you know, the infamous seven of swords, you know, deception and like uh, withholding information and, uh, you know, imposter syndrome and everything was just, really aligned with what, what, what unfolded in the weeks ahead, especially with all those delays and, the, and him hanging on and all of that. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, oh my gosh. Do you know Donald Trump has a very special horoscope? Like um, I've never seen a, like, you know, we, we've done like part of the curriculum is for us to learn special horoscopes. I've never seen a horoscope like Donald Trump's. It's like so strong, you know, it's, it's, like he has this ability that he's just surrounded by people who kowtow to him almost. They never argue. He doesn't, he's a very stubborn. He's just, he's, it's called a follow earth chart. So it's literally anyone who comes into his chart just becomes earth, just becomes him and just powers him up. Basically powers him, powers him up. Very few things can actually bring him down. Water can bring him down. So he lost in the year of the rat, which is a water animal. So wow. water years are when he's the weakest and when there's a slim chance of bringing him down, basically slim chance of bringing him down. And he is so strong. I wouldn't be surprised if in the year 2024, he runs again and he wins. Because yeah. 2024 is a very good year for him. Very you good that. You him. saw a spike of power in his, in his um, chart in 2024. Yeah. Either he becomes a celebrity again, he, he, you know, his business takes off, or he could run for presidency and he could win in 2024, depending on who his opponent is, basically. Yeah, yeah. he definitely seems like someone who's not going to give up, right? Like, <laughs> and if he's absorbing all that energy from all his, like, little syncophants, like, God, he might stay supercharged forever. <laughs> Guy's amazing. I think there might be marriage problems, though. Um, oh, well, I had that in the, in the cards. The yeah, you had up, the yeah, marriage problems. Um, I'll share again. I'll share again uh, on my stories the the, the 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 spreads that I did for both of the election for the elections for both candidates. But in Trump's uh, in Trump's hands, yeah, definitely he had marriage troubles. I was like, you know, I don't know if she's gonna stick around. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. I mean, uh, the ox clashes with his partner palace basically. So the ox is the animal of the year 2021. And um, it, it, so Melania is going to be feeling like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I want out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what is her birth sign? Is she a water sign? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's so hard to find people's um, birth dates on, and, and times of birth. So, you know, yeah, I only sure. do it when it's been publicly announced because otherwise yeah. it's just, you know, you never know when it's, someone's it's actually... Pure. Yeah, Bono, uh, whatever. So before I forget, I was going to say, right, who, whoever's on, um, 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 you know, watching right now, if you have any questions that you would like us to answer on 7th of January, um, 
just DM to either of us. We would love to, you know, like we would definitely hold some space for some questions. Like, so there's going to be predictions for 2021, um, guidance, because um, Tree, you're going to be doing guidance, you know, with your tarot cards. Um, and, you know, I can try and offer guidance from um, the I Ching as well, because the I Ching is very good with these things, um, telling you what to do. But definitely we want to answer people's questions as well, because I know tons of people have so many questions about 2021. And um, just DM us your questions and we would, yeah, you know, it's such a for everyone watching, basically. We would love to answer questions. Absolutely. And it would be amazing to have you all there as well. There's a quick question here. Can you recommend a good beginner resource for numerology, uh, a book or a podcast? Um, so personally, I've, I've, my numerological knowledge has all been through the tarot. So that I, I approach numerology through the deck. So uh, that's, that's how I learned. Um, but I've not really strayed from that system and learned numerology uh, just as its own module. So I wouldn't really know uh, the best place to direct you. But if you are interested in tarot and the numerological aspect worked within the tarot, I can certainly direct you towards my course, which um, starts up again in the new year with She's Lost Control. And it's um, once a week, uh, two hour classes. The classes are two hours each. So I go really meticulous and I go meticulous with the, the astrology as well. Uh, and all, sorry, and the numerology. So sorry for the little plug there. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know. Um, yeah, but well, I'm if, sure if there's some... lots of resources out there. Do you know any Shoba just specifically? No, I, I, I was going to say no, not at all. Not numerology at all. But um, yeah, not at all. I've never even tried um, numerology because I, although I think a lot of Indians, um, you know, they practice numerology quite a bit. Um, mm. And that's why someone advised me that I should spell my name with a double A. So Shoba with a double A. Um, oh. So so I've changed, you know, um, my name to sort of that as well. But that's as far, you know, it's people telling me as opposed to me actually knowing anything about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully that was helpful to, uh, <laughs> to that one viewer. Um, but yeah, it's a fascinating, fascinating um, art. And yeah, my, my art of numerology has been confined to the tarot, but it's not too much different, I don't think, from um, traditional numerology, as far as I know. <laughs> so yeah, so amazing to connect and catch up, Shoba. Um, yes. And would really love for... Um, for some of you watching as well today to join, it would be amazing to to bring forward our predictions. How are you preparing, Shoba? Maybe the people would be interested in how we're preparing. How are you preparing for your 2021 predictions? So it's it's doing the work basically, and it's just a lot of work. So um, looking at the calendar, firstly um, decoding the animals, and next year to not next year. Next year is already born, so it's the metal ox. So as to there's so many metal characters is to understand this particular metal element and what that might bring to the year's energy and how the ox reacts to it. And, um, and then is to look at the Chinese um, horoscope and do the horoscope for the year and then think about, you know, how the ox is going to interact with that horoscope. And then obviously it's about reading the hexagrams and it's drawing the characters out. It's looking at the judgment poems of the I Ching, um, doing you know there's so many formulas there's something called the flying star as well so you just do as many formulas as you can and then all i then try to do is what is the repeating pattern what is repeating what is repeating among everything and then i try and collate that and then i try and you know go right this is what you know is going to happen next year and then so, amazing that's yeah. great i love doing it basically december is like my favorite time every year december i just sit down and i do this and i love it <laughs> how about you? Oh, how I'm preparing. So I've been preparing with dream work. Right. So, um, so I've been um, setting intentions before I fall asleep to connect to any information in the dream realms. And I work with plants too. So that's a big part of my practice is working with various plants that help open uh, plants that are been used for centuries for divination. So uh, two of them, one specifically I've been working with a lot this week is mugwort 
and mugwort seems to bring about precognition for me. Uh, for others too, I've talked to a few others. Of course, there's no science backing this. So I'm not trying to purport like that this is a, the one step wonder to anything psychic. Um, but for me personally, I've noticed when I partake in mugwort as a tea before bed, um, it, it seems to activate my dreams a lot more and I seem to have little precognitive hits in and around my dreams when I work with that plant. Another plant that I work with that seems to bring about that as well is a Mexican dream herb called Kalea Zacatashishi. And that one is used for divinations by the Chantal people in Oaxaca. So I use that herb as well uh, before bed to, to set intentions to connect to anything um, future rate related uh, for divination. And I've also been preparing through um, meditations in the tarot. So at one point before the event, I'll probably sit down for a good hour and just really feel into what is a, whatever is coming through, uh, just connect to that zone and, uh, and, and get some automated, automatic writing done, down. So just whatever's coming through, I'll just automatically write and I'll pull some cards too, just as to, uh, as affirmations or confirmations or uh, to continue the dialogue. And then I'll bring that information into our session on the 7th. And then I'll also do some live uh, in the session. I'll do some live pull tarot pulls and oh. also live tune in as well through intuition, share whatever information I got in the dreams and also share yeah. whatever came through in, in uh, my meditations too. So it'll be interesting mix from my practice to your practice and how yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't wait seriously. Um, yeah, it'd be so interesting to see. Like you know, it's almost like let our powers combine and see what happens. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fascinating too because it's all in various ways, and we're showing different tools. And hopefully, all y'all who tune in will learn a little bit too about the art of some of these divinatory practices, and that it will spark some interest and maybe make you feel inspired to learn on your own as well, or deepen your already uh, blossoming practice. So. It'd be cool to have you join. So click the link in my bio. It'll take you to where you can register up at She's Lost Control. Um, we're going to do another live, though, Shoba, right? Next week? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to do another discussion next week if you all want to tune in. I think it's exactly a week from now on the same day. Exactly a week from now, exactly, yes. Um, yeah, and if you've got any questions and stuff as well, you know, you know, just come around. Just ask us and we'd be happy to answer it or, you know, I'll go, sorry, wait for our 7th of January session for that to be answered. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we'll definitely see you next week then on another live chat. Um, we'll talk a little bit more deeply about some of our other, um, you know, maybe our history and how we got into this as well. And maybe some more, share some more stories of, uh, experiences of divination and predictions that have come to pass and we can carry on the discussion and the sharing next week uh, but until then everyone have an amazing week um, and uh, don't forget to sign up to a, our event it'd be great to uh, show you what's come through for next year Woo <laughs> Indeed. all right everyone till next time thank you Shoba lots of love thanks Tree bye everyone <laughs>